Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me as I visit famous cemeteries, grave sites, memorials, and final resting places. As you can see from the sign, I'm here at Santa Barbara Cemetery in California for part two of my cemetery tour. If you haven't already watched part one, I'll put the link down below this video. In part one, my cousins Joan and Ron joined me and Jim here at the cemetery and we visited the grave sites of more than a half a dozen famous people who were buried here. Before my cousins arrived at the cemetery, Jim and I were able to visit nearly a dozen other famous grave sites here. The majority of the famous residents here are located either in the mausoleum area, just right inside the front gate to the right, or at the top of the hill in and around the iconic pyramid mausoleum in the sections that overlook the ocean. Today we'll be visiting both sections. I also created a Google map of our visit to the Santa Barbara Cemetery with pinpoints to all of the famous graves here that we were able to visit. I'll include the link to the map down below this video as well. So how many of you remember Fess Parker and the uh, Disney series, TV series, Daniel Boone and also uh, Davy Crockett? Remember Davy Crockett, the king of the wild frontier? So his uh, headstone is right here and it's, uh, it's got uh, a little uh, coonskin hat. Um, I remember uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I don't know, I, I suppose we probably got it at Disneyland and I had one of those coonskin, ha coonskin hats uh, just like uh, Davy Crockett wore. <laughs> And uh, this was back in the, the 60s, early 60s, I think, maybe even late 50s, but I think it was early 60s. So he's buried here. He was one of the, uh, the people that I really wanted to see. In fact, he was uh, Tab Hunter and Fess Parker were the two that I, uh, famous people buried in the, San, um, in the Santa Barbara Cemetery here that I really wanted to uh, see today. Now, there's quite a few other people that are also interesting, but these were the two that I was hoping to find. Uh, Fess Parker, the uh, Find a Grave app, did show a GPS and it brought us fairly close, but uh, it's not real accurate. So hopefully this video will help you if you're coming to visit in person. It'll uh, give you an idea. It's uh, the GPS is uh, just a little bit off, but the photos with the GPS and the photos, we were able to uh, locate it. There's a large tree here in the picture, and then these two uh, grave headstones. Where are they? <laughs> right there. These two uh, headstones helped us uh, locate uh, Fess Parker's grave, which is right, uh, right there. During his acting career, Fess Parker appeared in more than 25 movies, including a couple of classics, but he'll probably always be best remembered for his role as Davy Crockett in the Walt Disney TV miniseries that aired in 1955 and later for his role as Daniel Boone in the television series that aired from 1964 to 1970. He retired from show business at the young age of 49 and opened a winery near Santa Barbara. He also opened the Fess Parker Resort on the beach in Santa Barbara. And for decades, it was really difficult to think of Santa Barbara without thinking of Fess Parker. All right, so there's a few other people, so let's go see if we can find them before my cousin arrives and we have to go eat. Although I, we did get here early enough. The cemetery opens at 8 o'clock, and it's still only, it's not even 9 o'clock yet, is it? And we've already found Fess Parker and Tab Hunter's graves, so it's a smaller cemetery. makes it a little bit easier to find, and fortunately, thank you, Find a Grave people, the Find a Grave Memorials. <laughs> uh, had a lot of good information and uh, most of them have GPS's. There's a few that don't, so I'm gonna see if I can find a couple of, of the people who don't have GPS's and I'll add those for others using Find a Grave to find people. I've been trying to do that a lot more lately. I, I get distracted, I come to the cemeteries and I'm looking for various people and I do my videos and then I forget to actually add the GPS if, if the grave doesn't have it. So I'm trying to pay a special attention to that now and and try to be helpful since so many find a grave uh, people have helped me find graves over the years. So anyway, let's go see if we can find the next uh, famous person here.
So we found Lawrence Harvey's gravestone right behind me, you can see there, right in front of this enormous tree. Now this, there wasn't a picture in uh, Find a Grave as far as where the tree was, but the um, GPS was, was pretty good. It uh, brought us right here. And you can see there's a, uh, right behind the big tree is a, a personal or a private mausoleum there. And the uh, pyramid is right back there. Now the ocean is right behind us here. And if you just stand here and you're quiet, you can actually hear the waves crashing on the beach. I mean, that's how close we are. Not far from Fess Parker's grave is the final resting place of actor Lawrence Harvey and his daughter, Domino. Harvey appeared in 55 movies and dozens of TV shows and was a very busy actor during his very short career. He received an Oscar nomination for his role in the 1959 movie Room at the Top, but sadly he died of cancer at the young age of 45. His daughter Domino was famous in her own right for being a bounty hunter, but sadly, she also died at a very young age. She apparently died from a drug overdose of painkillers at the age of 35. So this grave is for all of you baseball fans. This is uh, Edwin Matthews Jr. So right behind his grave, right back there, is the, uh, the mausoleum, the private mausoleum of the founder of Sambo's restaurant. You may remember Sambo's if you uh, grew up back in the uh, 60s especially. I remember as kids, we used to go there all the time. The Sambo's restaurant, the original Sambo's restaurant is still here in Santa Barbara. But anyway, so you can see uh, Eddie Matthews headstone here. And it's just uh, a short distance from the founder of uh, Sambo's restaurant. This is his father. Is that his mother? Yeah, that would be his mother. This is... Uh, must have been his wife. Yeah? Yeah. Ed Matthews played for 17 seasons for teams like the Boston Braves, the Milwaukee Braves, the Atlanta Braves, the Houston Astros, and the Detroit Tigers. He hit 512 home runs during his career and is considered to be one of the greatest baseball players of all time. And in 1978, he was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Heading back down the hill to the front gate, we'll come to the mausoleum and chapel on the left-hand side. I discovered that there are multiple ways to get into the mausoleum. There's an upstairs and a downstairs. But I'm going to start by entering through the chapel. It's very beautiful, and I thought you'd want to see it. The mural work is some of the best I've seen. And I'm guessing that many of the famous people who are buried here had their funeral services held in this uh, chapel as well. I find it interesting that most of the cemetery chapels that I visit seem to be lined, the walls seem to be lined with crypts. This is the first chapel that I've seen where the walls are lined with niches. Once you get to the pulpit area at the front of the church, there's a door to the left, and I'm going to exit through this door and head straight down the hallway until I see the sign on the right-hand side that says, Sanctuary of Life Eternal. You enter the door on the right, and then you make the first left, where you come to a very bright and open room of niches. These are cremation niches, and there are two famous people interred here, a husband and wife, Heather Angel, and Robert Sinclair. Robert was a film and TV director, primarily in the 1930s and 40s, who sadly and tragically was stabbed to death by an intruder 
who broke into the couple's home. Apparently, he was killed while trying to protect his wife, Heather, from the attacker. Heather Angel appeared in more than 50 movies during her career. She began her acting career on the stage in England and in 1932 moved to Hollywood to further her acting career. In film, she's probably best remembered for the four Bulldog Drummond movies that she appeared in. There were a couple of dozen Bulldog Drummond movies made over the years, and I just happened to notice that Ronald Coleman, who we visited in part one of this um, visit to the cemetery, appeared in two of the earlier films, while Heather appeared in four of the later films. And they're both buried here in the same cemetery, so of course it made me wonder if they knew each other in real life. Or it might just be another one of those weird coincidences that pop up in cemeteries all the time. You might also remember Angel for a couple of her television appearances. From 1964 to 1965, she had a recurring role in the very popular soap opera called Peyton Place. Angel was also in another very popular uh, TV show of the time called Family Affair, starring Brian Keith and Sebastian Cabot. The sitcom ran from 1966 to 1971, and Angel played a nanny called Miss Haversham. If you've never seen the show, definitely check it out. It's still pretty funny today. Now, heading back down the corridor, the way that I came in, I'm going to take the stairs to the left down to the first floor. This is a much larger indoor mausoleum section. You can also enter through this door here, which is just right across the street from the outdoor mausoleum crypts. I'm going to head straight back until I come to another door. And just before exiting that door on the left-hand wall is the niche of famous architect Mendel Meyer. Meyer and his architectural business partner, Philip Haller, were two of the most famous architects in the Los Angeles area in the early 1900s. They designed many of the most iconic buildings in the Los Angeles area, and many are now on the National Register of Historic Places. In 1922, they designed Grauman's Egyptian Theater in Hollywood, and then in 1926, they designed the very famous Grauman's Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, where millions of movie fans still go today to view the hand and footprints of their favorite movie stars. I've been going to the Chinese theater since I was a kid, and the interior is pretty spectacular, but you don't even need to go inside to appreciate the beauty of this building. It's one of the most famous buildings in the world, and unfortunately, I'm guessing that probably very few of you watching this video have ever heard of Mendel Meyer. But I think he deserves to be remembered just as much as the movie stars whose hand and footprints have been left here. Now, heading across the street to the north, to the Mausoleum in the Pines Courtyard, we're going to find the final resting places of three more famous people. This is an open-air mausoleum with both crypts and niches for cremated remains. As soon as we enter the courtyard, on the very left-hand wall is the niche of actor Christopher Bernau. Bernau is another famous person who died young at the age of 49 from a heart attack. Fans will probably remember him either for his role on the soap opera Dark Shadows or for his role in the later soap opera Guiding Light. Dark Shadows was another one of those really popular soap operas at the time that was very unique. It featured vampires and ghosts and werewolves, zombies, witches, warlocks, which today wouldn't seem that unusual on TV, but back then I'm pretty sure it was one of the first of its kind. The series ran from 1966 to 1971, and Bernau appeared in 23 episodes from 1969 to 1970. On The Guiding Light, he played the villain, Alan Spaulding. 
The series ran from 1977 to 1984. On the wall to the left of Bernau's niche is the crypt of actor John Ireland. It's near the top of the wall, as you can see, and it's a little bit difficult to read his name on the plaque. Ireland was a Canadian-born actor and apparently was the first Canadian actor from Vancouver to be nominated for an Academy Award. He was nominated for his role in the 1949 movie All the King's Men. He started his career on Broadway he appeared in nearly 90 movies and he even has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his acting on TV. And later in life, he opened a restaurant in Santa Barbara called Ireland's. And like Fess Parker and so many other actors, he was well known in the city. On the wall directly across from John Ireland's crypt is the crypt of a very famous princess. I had no idea that she was interred here and wasn't even looking for her. As I was searching for Christopher Bernau in John Ireland, Jim was wandering around and just happened to notice her plaque. So we looked her up online and discovered that she was the sister of the last Shah of Iran. During her brother's reign, she was the president of the Red Lion and Sun Society. But because of the Islamic Revolution, she was forced to leave Iran. So she moved to the United States, where she lived out her life in Santa Barbara, California. It would be interesting to know how she chose Santa Barbara. If anyone watching knows, please leave a comment down below. In the same section as the princess, Jim also noticed this crypt with the name John John. The first name is John and the last name is John. I would love to know what his parents were thinking when they named him. Or maybe he changed his name. It's certainly memorable and not a name that you would forget anytime soon. I looked him up online but wasn't able to find anything. He wasn't famous, but I don't think anyone who knew him would ever forget his name. Even though we were able to find quite a few famous people buried here at the Santa Barbara Cemetery, there are quite a few others that we weren't able to find, or we just didn't have enough time to find. Before coming to the cemetery, I read stories that Ronald Reagan had once been buried here, and that he had later been moved to his presidential library in Simi Valley, which is really about a uh, half hour to 45 minutes away. My cousin Ron, who has lived here in Santa Barbara for most of his life, said that wasn't true, that Reagan was never buried here. So I was a little bit confused. I did a little bit of research online and discovered that the Reagan Library opened on November 4th, 1991. Ronald Reagan didn't die until 2004. So my best guess is that he and Nancy originally planned to be buried at this cemetery and probably even purchased plots here. But after becoming president, their burial plans changed and they decided to be buried at the presidential library, which is where most modern day presidents are buried. So if he hadn't have become president, this is probably where we would have been visiting his final resting place today. As always, thanks for joining me today, and if you like today's tour, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I try to upload new videos each week, and leave a comment if you have favorite memories of any of the famous people we visited today, or if you also have family members buried in the cemetery. I'd love to hear your stories, and I hope to see you next time.